Hello everybody, this is Zephyr and we are back to PHP and MySQL tutorials. In the previous tutorial, we talked about uh, PHP as an introduction and we also installed ZAMP as our local server which we are going to use in the upcoming tutorials starting from this one. If you haven't watched it, please um, go back to the uh, playlist and um, watch the first tutorial. So before I go further into um, explaining what we are going to be doing in this tutorial, first of all, uh, I'm going to introduce to you what MySQL is because um, in the previous um, tutorial um, I talked about ZAMP and uh, MySQL. So we installed the required services thus Apache as well as MySQL. So um, after install, installing those services, I promised you that I'm going to explain to you in detail um, about um, MySQL and everything else. So what do we mean when we say MySQL? It means MySQL. MySQL. So MySQL or MySQL allows users to create tables where data can be stored much more efficiently than the way data is stored in arrays. In order to use MySQL or any database which is out there um, effectively, you need to understand SQL, Structured Query Language. SQL. So as you can see here on the dashboard, um, we have SQL here. So for you to, to use MySQL, you will need to have knowledge of structured query language. So um, in my tutorials, I'm going to be um, using some, um, some a little bit code uh, on my sequel but for you to understand more please you can refer to, to um, YouTube tutorials of course I'm gonna make um, SQA tutorials later on so for now you can refer to W3 tutorials or you can go on YouTube and then you can search uh, let's say introduction to SQL and the like so You'll need this knowledge in our tutorials because um, web development requires um, knowledge of SQL because PHP on its own cannot um, communicate directly to the server. There has to be um, a link between which is SQL. Now, um, <clears throat> as you can see, this is the dashboard. For you to go to this dashboard, you can open your browser and then you, you type localhost um, PHP my admin and if you remove this and you enter it will take you to this dashboard so on this dashboard on our right side we have I mean, I mean on on the left side we have um, the databases and then on the right panel we have the top menu here databases SQL status um, user accounts, export, import settings, replication, variables, um, character sets, and more. So on the, um, we can call it the welcome screen here. Uh, if you look at uh, the right part, we have database server, we have web server, and we have PHP my admin. So I, I'm just going to introduce to you three things which are important. Three things which are important. One, it's the server name here. So this is the IP address for the server. It's 127.0.0.1. And then we have user, which is root. And then we have the PHP extension, which is my SQLI. So the version, of course, this is the current version. Um, um, you can use older versions, but uh, you'll have some sort of restrictions uh, when you are using maybe uh, frameworks like Laravel um, and the like. So you'll need to update your PHP version. So I'm using 8.0.6, which is the current version as of 2022. Uh, this is January. 
Um, so these three are what um, I'm going to introduce in this topic, uh, the server name or the server IP address, and then the user, which is the username, which is root, and then um, MySQLi. In the, uh, in the past, we were using MySQL without the I at the end. So the extension was upgraded to MySQLi. So let's now start. <clears throat> in this uh, lesson, the main focus or the main aim is to create a database, which we are going to be communicating to. So you click on New, or you can click here whether you click on new or you click here. So let's click on databases and then you will have uh, this section whereby um, you create a database name and everything else apart from this, you leave it as it is. You don't have to, this knowledge, um, I don't even understand myself. So um, I just go there and create. So I'll write tutorial and then create. So as I have already indicated that MySQL allows users to create tables where data can be stored much more efficiently. So once you've created your database, you will have no tables. So it, it will say no tables found in the database. Please create a table. So we'll, we'll go into uh, this later. So now that we have um, created our database, let us now create a project. Let us now create a project. So you will go to um, your computer and then you go into local disk C and then you go into ZAMP and then you will go into HT Docs. Remember, this is where your projects will be um, uh, will be stored. So don't delete everything. Just leave everything as it is. Don't delete it because if you delete, then you are going to lose. Um, um, this uh, PHP my admin. Um, so <clears throat> once we've done that, we will create a project or I'm using Windows 11. You can just click here and then you write tutorial. You write tutorial and inside this folder is where we are going to put our files. So the first file which I'm going to create is a DB file or a database file. But remember the extension is still .php because we are dealing with PHP. So remember the extension will be .php. Now I'm going to open my text editor. You can use Sublime, you can use Atom, you can use uh, brackets, you can use Visual Studio Code and the best one uh, which is uh, there as of now, the first one is um, Visual Studio Code, and then maybe seconded by Sublime. It, it depends, but uh, I, I use Sublime. Um, sometimes I use Visual Studio Code, so it doesn't matter. Now, uh, you create a file, and uh, we said we are going to rename it um, a DB file. So remember, local disk C, ZAMP, and then HT Docs, and then tutorial. So inside here is where we are going to save our file. So you can write database.php, but this is too long. Um, for me, I just like shortcuts. So it's db.php. So you save the file. <coughs> now, um, uh, now we have created our file, but the file is uh, is uh, is empty. So there's no communication that has, uh, that has been created so far. Now, the PHP code is always inside uh, a PHP tag. So how do we create a PHP tag? A, a, a PHP tag can be created by this symbol and then a question mark and you write PHP. So what we have done here, we've um, created a PHP tag. And uh, when you are using .php file, if you don't have any HTML tags in, 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 um, in this file, you are just going to leave it as it is because it doesn't have to have an end tag as like we do in, uh, 
in HTML like if you say h1 so h1 will require you to do something like this like an end tag so it doesn't have to be like this when you are using only PHP it doesn't have to be like you can just uh, say h1 just like that h1 so here because we are not using h1 because h1 is not a PHP tag we are going to use um, uh, that tag which you are seeing on top there so um, now um, when okay before I proceed when you are when this tag is inside an HP and uh, an HTML tag or is inside HTML tags you are going to do like this so whatever is between here this tag and this end tag the start tag and the end tag here uh, whatever is between from two three four five these lines one two three four and five that is what is called a PHP code so inside these tags will be uh, a, a PHP code so we are going to know more about this as we go along but uh, for now let us proceed with um, this tag only so um, PHP uses what what we call variables PHP uses variables so what is a variable variables are containers or we can call them spaces in memory that hold data so the data can be changed as the name suggests is variable so it varies so variables have rules and um, uh, these rules uh, some pro, uh, exceed up to five six but the main rules which variables hold are four number one a variable name must start with a dollar sign so a variable name must start with a dollar sign so that's the first rule the next rule it must only contain alpha numeric characters with the only exception of an underscore so this is an underscore so when you've done that it means um, uh, you, you, you can you can add uh, le let's say uh, a name here like something like that or if you want to differen differentiate between uh, let's say you want to say first sorry first name so you can do it like this or you can do this so that's what it means uh, with uh, only an exception of an underscore so it must start with <clears throat> an alphabet or an underscore as I've done that you can start with an alphabet later or you can start with an underscore but you cannot start with uh, something o of course you can do that but you see um, that letter eight has been in uh, has been shown as a uh, an orange has been shown with an orange color so that's not good all variables that's the last one are case sensitive meaning x and x are different variables what i mean here when say x and um, sorry x and x these are two different variables it will not recognize as x x like one these are two different uh, variables so um, now let us uh, create our um, variable for <coughs> connection so this is a string it's a connection string so you can write connection but this is not good because this is too long you are going to be using this in most of the files so writing the connection the whole statement uh, doesn't feel like you're a programmer so you can shorten it con or con it, it it is up to you so after that you are going to put a an equal sign you're going to put an equal sign so once you've done that you can see um, um, it has given me options suggestions am I supposed to create 
a connection like my SQLI connection or maybe something new or my SQLI query or my SQLI fetch array or whatever so there are a lot of options here but me I'm only um, concerned with you know there are two types of um, uh, of ways in which you can connect to the database Th this first way is pure PHP the other way which we are going to learn in the next lesson will be object oriented uh, programming OOP PHP so let us start with the pure PHP now for us to connect to the database we are going to create a connection so the connection will be my SQLI con like that and then brackets so remember when we are dealing with um, you know the other programming languages like Kotlin you don't put uh, uh, semicolons at the end but PHP we do we put a semicolon at the end to mark the end of the code so um, once we have done that we are going now to create uh, four elements and these four elements are going to be inside quotes so you can put double quotes or single quotes so you can put single quotes or you can put double quotes like this so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so for me I will use single quotes so that will be the first element second element third element and the final element so these elements they are important in the sense that uh, you remember I said that um, I'm going to introduce to you three things the server name the database uh, extension as well as the user name so we have created uh, we have used the extension my SQLI here as you can see my SQLI so this is our PHP extension and then um, we have to use the server server name so our server name is 127.0.0.1 so you can copy it I just want to take you uh, slowly so you will have to bear with me and then we we'll put that uh, 127.0.0.1 now this is the server name or before I proceed I can say this is the server name and this is the user name of your server the username of your server and uh, this is the password of uh, username and then this is our database the name of our database so now you understand what's going on so we have the server name we have the username we have the password and we have the database name so here I've said that our server name is 127.0.1 and then the username remember the username this is the username root so I'm gonna copy this and we paste it here and then password it doesn't have a password if you go to user user accounts you will see root 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 127 as the host name you can you, you can see that uh, password is no 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 so it means uh, it doesn't have a password so we, we leave it blank as it is then our database we created the database by the name tutorial so we have to write tutorial here tutorial there we go so the connection is perfect we have uh, we have managed to not managed but we have finished our connection stream so in the next lesson we're gonna test this so that we know that uh, uh, the connection is successfully um, uh, connected so without further ado let's meet in the next lesson